Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here and uh, for having the patience <laughs> of listening to all, all of us. Uh, so uh, uh, I think what is very important, I'm Nadia Casabella, I ex already explained. I'm a principal at uh, an architecture and urban, uh, urbanism office called Tenten. And I'm also teaching at uh, the Faculty of uh, Architecture. Uh, and I find these two activities uh, uh, extremely uh, complementary and uh, enriching each other. But uh, to start with, with the title, uh, Tinkering with uh, Urban Metabolism in your uh, urban uh, design and planning practice, uh, yes, it's like uh, you don't really know what you're doing. Uh, actually, you are getting inspired by the work uh, of uh, Aristide, but also of uh, a circular economy we saw today by con other consultancy like uh, Metabolic, but you are not really uh, aware of uh, how far or in which way you can manipulate, uh, integrate all these notions in urban design. Uh, the why we work uh, with, uh, we would call it an urban metabolic approach, I mean a rather call it a systemic approach to territories, uh, because uh, we wanted to shift the focus from a, a purely reproductive vision of our built environment into a more productive idea of it, which is being uh, articulated around flows, spaces and actors. The second question that moves our uh, kind of interest or motivates our interest for uh, urban metabolism is because we want to live to a certain extent the uh, urban supremacy uh, behind. So this way of looking into the landscape that is very much uh, human centered and is not uh, really taking into account the complexity of uh, ecological assemblages that can be uh, there. And the third question uh, we were uh, kind of um, interested uh, by in urban metabolic uh, approach was this uh, enhancing collaboration. This idea that uh, if you want to transition to move into a different way of uh, uh, producing and consuming, you cannot do it alone, but uh, you need to uh, collaborate and uh, kind of build up a practice that is very much uh, based on uh, working with others. So uh, the work I'm going to be uh, presenting here uh, is very much, uh, yeah, what uh, Aristide was referring to as the industrial ecology uh, perspective. Uh, we've been working in many different commissions uh, like uh, yeah, uh, water landscape in the southern part of uh, Brussels or another industrial landscape in the northern part of Brussels. We all also have developed projects around uh, urban agriculture or large scale agriculture. But here I chose to present a project that is uh, urban uh, based and uh, based specifically around uh, uh, port economies or economies that take uh, place in uh, old uh, port areas uh, in cities. So the, the title of the project and also the context of the project is uh, what do you need? So uh, we answered a call by the International Architecture Biennial of Rotterdam uh, asking to uh, improve or trigger the uh, circularization of an urban development that was planned in uh, this old port area, which is Merve Fierhavens. It's a kind of an old urban port in Rotterdam that because the port is continuously upscaling and moving uh, closer to the sea is to a certain extent uh, uh, le left behind. So the question was, uh, how can you improve the circularization of this territory? How can you improve the uh, circularity dimension of area uh, development? Uh, and then we started uh, answering this question or this demand by uh, saying, okay, this is the context, sorry, uh, by uh, asking ourselves, okay, what we find nowadays is that there is a, a kind of a clash or a big contradiction or a gap, eh, you could also say it, between uh, the policy or, uh, based or oriented uh, visions of circularity and what happens actually on the ground. So, uh, in a way, uh, we read uh, a lot about policy documents and policy ambitions that uh, are uh, kind of uh, oriented towards uh, or ambitioning uh, 
uh, further circularization of uh, certain territories or industries, but actually the actors that uh, would be very much in charge of this uh, transition, this uh, change, are uh, a bit uh, left behind. They are not sufficient, sufficiently organized. They don't, uh, sometimes they lack the technical uh, capabilities in order to move forward. Uh, they are disconnected from these policy uh, visions. They are not sufficiently integrated into this uh, conversation around uh, uh, policy making. So uh, what we propose, first, uh, uh, we were going to work uh, from uh, the place on. So this was very much our uh, ambition to say, okay, this is a kind of an urban uh, uh, port, an urban port uh, area, which has been uh, in the meantime colonized by many other activities that are not just uh, or exclusively uh, linked to, uh, to the port. So we wanted to explore, first of all, the diversity of activities, of industries, of actors that were uh, located uh, there and why there exactly. Uh, understanding that these uh, kind of uh, port areas are very much a pin on a network. Okay? This is something that is going to uh, come uh, afterwards. So we wanted to uh, explore uh, which kind of uh, companies or activities were taking place already uh, on the site and also uh, uh, inquiry the actors. Uh, and for doing that, uh, we used uh, uh, the idea of inquiring them about uh, three uh, stories and a dream. Okay? The three stories, I think I have them here. The three stories were about, uh, uh, yeah, uh, where are they in their uh, industrial cycle? Are they growing? Are they shrinking? Uh, do they want to uh, grow? Which kind of circularity uh, practices they already uh, have implemented in the way of uh, uh, operating? and uh, uh, which kind of spatial needs, because we are, I insist, very much working from the spatial uh, impact of uh, this circularity. And fourth, uh, what is the dream? Eh? What kind of a dream do they have about the uh, future of the company, uh, but also uh, how can they uh, translate this dream into a more uh, circular approach uh, in working with uh, uh, yeah, materials, energy, but also transport or the stocks uh, they are using at the moment. Uh, and then uh, we were, uh, so I'm going to uh, skip this one, so just to, uh, to speed up. Uh, and then uh, next to this uh, uh, kind of uh, inquiry we did, we did uh, around uh, 40 interviews uh, with the local actors, but actors that were not just uh, limited to this uh, study area, but also working in the surroundings. So we had to also, by interviewing a first selection of actors of uh, around 15 actors, we realized to which extent their activities were uh, connected to a wider network that was covering the whole of the Rotterdam uh, region. So we were forced to kind of enlarge uh, especially our study area. And then, uh, uh, coincidentally, and uh, that was a very nice coincidence, <laughs> Metabolic was making a kind of a metabolic uh, scan of the city of Rotterdam, and we uh, had access to their uh, kind of uh, uh, overall analysis of the flows and the importance of certain flows. So this was an invaluable uh, source of information for us to decide uh, which kind of flows were more important in order to be uh, tweaked uh, on within the area of the Merve field havens, eh? to say, okay, there is the uh, organic flow, there is the uh, consumer, uh, consumer items flow, there is the construction and demolition materials flow, but okay, which one of all these flows that are being anal uh, analyzed uh, in the study of uh, metabolic makes sense to be uh, tweaked or manipulated at the scale of Merve field havens? So uh, we came down to three flows based also on the actors we could uh, interview. Uh, and one was the uh, organic waste flow. Uh, the other one was the construction demolition uh, material flow. And the last one was the textile. Uh, because we discovered that the amount of uh, textile waste that is being dispatched from Rotterdam uh, to the world and mostly to southern African countries is as big as the inflow of textile of the whole city. So we were kind of amazed by this kind of uh, uh, discoveries. Okay, uh, and then of course energy, energy was uh, kind of uh, an undercurrent uh, that was uh, 
uh, percolating through our uh, whole uh, study. The second thing we did, uh, but maybe uh, I'm going to just show you be before I forget. Ah, yeah, I didn't bring the passport, no. Sorry, I, I was uh, looking because uh, the from the interviews I thought I had, yes. Uh, sorry to be a bit uh, uh, disorganized, but uh, I, I was explaining we did a series of interviews and uh, what we tried to do is to uh, translate uh, the contents of these interviews in what we call uh, circular passport. So we made a passport for every one of the uh, companies we uh, interviewed in which we kind of, uh, what you see here is a bit, uh, we made a small description where they are physically uh, located and then uh, the kind of uh, physical needs, circular ambitions, uh, but this was extremely important in order to communicate to other actors as well. So while we were interviewing actors also located outside Merrifield Havens, to show them what the other companies were busy uh, with. Okay, so uh, as I explained in the beginning, our ambition or the question that was put on our plate was how can we further circularity uh, within this uh, area of Merrifield Havens. And of course, the first thing we thought is uh, thinking very much from the point of view of architects is that you need to uh, create facilities that uh, would put all these actors together, that would help them to collaborate, to know from each other which kind of uh, uh, secondary flows they are working with or they would be interested in. And uh, these facilities, what we call facilities, we said, okay, depending on the level of ambition uh, of the city and the, the port, but also of the international biennial uh, about circularity and how to develop it uh, especially, you could have a, a kind of facilities or the creation of facilities that are considered like a quick wins or seats. Yeah? And these quick wins, uh, uh, starting from the interviews we made with the actors could be from enlarging uh, the storage space or creating shared storage facilities because suddenly, uh, for instance, when you are dealing with uh, organic waste, you have a, a bigger amount uh, of a uh, bigger volume of uh, organic waste and you cannot handle it uh, because you don't have enough space uh, to, to handle it. Uh, but this volume is not a continuous volume, so you need a kind of buffer space you can use <laughs> in order to... Uh, uh, located or accommodated. But also, th this could be one, but also could be about a logistical rambola. Eh? So a space where you can break down uh, the goods uh, uh, in, in entering uh, the city into a smaller pack packages. And by breaking these down, you can maybe uh, customize them or add value locally uh, to this product. So some of the interventions or, or these facilities could be rather uh, quick. Uh, uh, to implement. Some of them uh, would rather uh, consolidate or entrench some of the uh, dynamics we discover uh, on site, eh? circular dynamics. So, uh, for instance, uh, linked to the three flows we focus on, we talked about uh, bio hub. So, a bio hub where companies like Hrun Collect or Sugu. Uh, so two companies that are locally based uh, and that are uh, currently collecting most of the organic waste that is uh, being generated in Rotterdam and uh, companies uh, furthermore who try to uh, use uh, the secondary flows at the source without mixing them up in order to be able to generate products that are having a uh, higher added value, for instance, from the pulp of mangoes that are entering the, the harbor, there are, Sugu is creating new textiles. Huh? Or uh, Hrun Collect is developing a specific uh, uh, digest state that can be used in the production of bioplastics. Bio eh? So, but we thought, okay, it's interesting to have a, a bio hub, a facility, in which all these companies that are experimenting with uh, uh, bio uh, waste could locate and be working under the same environmental permit, but also could share some facilities like a labo or a storage space, so on and so forth. Uh, textile refinery, same thing, uh, material bank, same thing. I mean, I'm not gonna uh, start explaining all th these things because uh, uh, it will take us uh, the whole morning. But uh, the second thing we did was, okay, so we uh, need to add or create or identify what are the actual needs of the actors uh, 
operating uh, on site. But at the same time, there was a, a plan, a master plan that was made by Delva Landscape. Again, I, I think next time you should uh, invite Delva <laughs> in order to explain what they do. So they were developing a master plan that was absolutely not, uh, uh, that was in a way totally ignoring the kind of economic uh, or uh, dynamics or circular dynamics that were existing in the area. So in a way, our work uh, at a certain moment consisted on analyzing this spatial plan and coming up with uh, uh, interventions that would uh, kind of uh, adapt this, uh, you would say, uh, normal waterfront development of a port area with a lot of housing to uh, answer and uh, create place for the existing companies that were operating uh, locally. Uh, after uh, the identification of the facilities uh, and the, the flows, we organized a series of talks with uh, actors or representatives of these major, three major flows, so textile, construction and demolition materials, and uh, bio waste, in order to dive into more concretely in what, into what uh, their needs uh, were. And we also discussed with them what we called uh, flow uh, charts. Uh, they are not really uh, these material, nice material uh, uh, diagrams that uh, metabolic and circular, circular economy showed us this morning. But they, what our ambition was, was okay, we are gonna uh, look into uh, the flow of, for instance, organic waste again, and look at the companies that are locally based or within the network of the companies that are locally based uh, 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 in which part they are acting and discover what are the missing links in the, in the flow chart. Eh? So in which way these facilities could uh, become a, uh, an improvement to the existing situation. Eh? So to kind of really uh, uh, intervene in this uh, missing uh, or in this gap. Eh? So this is what we did. Here you see the companies that are already uh, active on, on site and uh, the missing links. And next to that, we also uh, started to think about uh, the labor uh, that is behind this uh, circularization of the economy. So the kind of uh, 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 expertises or crafts that uh, you need in order to uh, bring about this change. Because uh, by talking to uh, all these uh, uh, local uh, firms, what we discovered is that uh, not only uh, they, uh, I mean, the kind of activities they develop require a uh, uh, highly skilled uh, workforce, but also uh, what they saw is that maybe some of these uh, uh, professionals were still missing in the way they were organizing their uh, supply chain or value chain. So uh, this is also what we did, is uh, to identify within every one of the uh, uh, flows, uh, which kind of uh, uh, professions could be created also as a way of raising awareness of uh, this type of economy that is very urban. Um, here is uh, just a model of, uh, of the some of the pilot projects we developed. So we develop, uh, as I was explaining, this uh, bio waste uh, uh, hub uh, material bank for the uh, construction and demolition uh, uh, materials, and here uh, textile refinery. So there were pilot projects that I insist were discussed with, uh, uh, with the actors uh, in three different uh, working sessions. Here is a general map of the area in which uh, these pilot projects are located. Here the construction material bank, here the textile refinery, and there the bio hub. Of course, this map is, uh, enters into a profound uh, uh, discrepancy with the master plan that is happening uh, at the moment. Uh, this is uh, an image of the exhibition uh, there in the middle. You can see the three pilot projects that were uh, developed, uh, exhibited. Uh, these are some uh, images of uh, the different uh, workshops we organized. In these workshops, we also collected the, the kind of products or residual flows that are existing locally in order to show it to the to the public into this exhibition that is open to everyone uh, but also as a kind of a material a starting uh, question in order to uh, discuss with the local actors about the future eh? and then for instance in the agri food so the bio waste uh, uh, hub uh, they were all uh, saying 
there are already incubators in the area. There is a lot of innovation. There is a lot of creativity. But actually, uh, what we need is uh, uh, the possibility of uh, growing into, into that, so upscaling. That was a very clear uh, demand of the company. So for instance, Alexander Prinsen is a company behind a company that is specialized in the creation of cleansing products uh, based on uh, 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 citric uh, waste. Uh, another of the kind of working uh, sessions we organized was the construction of material, uh, no, uh, sorry, the uh, construction and demolition uh, material. And then we, of course, had people around the table, local actors like the Bao Academy, which is a kind of a company that is based in Merrifield Heavens, which is salvaging uh, material from the rest of the city, but also uh, training people in order to uh, dismantle elements that come from uh, demolition sites, for instance, but also learning how to uh, reuse all these materials, and the, but also the, the, the main actors in the construction sector in, uh, in uh, in the Netherlands, and then we have a quote by Elmar, who is uh, sitting here around Elmar Willems, uh, in which uh, uh, he is kind of claiming uh, there is a lot of uh, there are a lot of things happening already on the small scale. So we have uh, Bau Academy, but also Burman, for instance, uh, BC in Merefier Havens, uh, but we need to upscale uh, these solutions. So it was very much about again upscaling, growing, and the third and last uh, uh, workshop we organized was about the textile. And there, the conclusions were somehow uh, uh, surprising because it was uh, the conclusion uh, to which we arrive is, okay, you need to go beyond the material recycling of a uh, textile. Uh, so the kind of uh, uh, sea wind uh, workshops you find in the area that are customizing all these uh, uh, textile uh, secondary uh, flow. And you need to move into the real uh, question, which is about um, uh, the uh, acrylic uh, or artificial fibers. So that we need to maybe think of a possible collaboration with the petrochemical sector that is settled down in the uh, uh, Rotterdam uh, port in order to start thinking of how to recycle all these PET bottles and uh, other plastics into uh, acrylic uh, textile. So uh, the result of all this trajectory was a series, uh, consisted of a series of recommendations that were articulated into three documents. One was about the uh, opportunity map, so within the existing area what kind of special opportunities you can identify a coalition uh, map, so which kind of actors you need to put together in order to further uh, circularity uh, locally, and a road map in order to explain to the city of Rotterdam, who was commissioning also this study, and the port of Rotterdam, how they could uh, move, move uh, forward. And then all that was uh, synthesized in an action uh, plan, in which you see already that depending on the, on the flow you are dealing with, so agri-food, uh, construction material, and textile, the type of uh, uh, intervention and the type of steering uh, uh, action that all these uh, policy uh, actors uh, should uh, be playing is totally different. So, for instance, for the agri-food, it's really about the scaling up, so the role of uh, the municipality and other actors in the circular economy should be to uh, rather to facilitate what is already happening. In the case of the construction and demolition sector, it, uh, the role would be rather that of an accelerator. So, because there are enormous amount of initiatives in all scales, in all uh, construction materials, so you just need to accelerate that in order to put all these uh, good vibes together. And in the textile, it was rather the role of a researcher developer. So you really need to study what is the uh, actual opportunities linked to this, uh, uh, to this flow uh, uh, locally. And then, uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm with that, I'm going to finish. Uh, so this was the what eh? and then the how. We were talking about uh, uh, yeah, three possible. So we were talking about the importance of having someone who would be uh, curating the whole uh, circularization uh, process locally, and uh, someone who could, uh, yeah, okay, doesn't matter, who could be, uh, whose work could be organized uh, throughout three different documents. So uh, a document which is a charter in which you would uh, put all the actors together and define together what kind of ambitions exist. Then a business uh, principle which is kind of working out which kind of 
business models business models could be uh, developed uh, locally and then uh, the last one is the operational uh, manual is to say okay which kind of concrete actions do we need to uh, set up uh, put up uh, into place in order to act act this circularization uh, I just wanted to, yeah this is an image of a different project uh, we kept to uh, we kept on working around uh, uh, port areas thanks to the commission by OVAM. We were uh, for the last year busy with uh, studying uh, circular city ports or circularity in uh, uh, urban port areas, and this is a bit the, the result of uh, of, uh, of this uh, exploration, which was an exploration uh, commission. Um, and is to say what we uh, learned very much from this exercise in Murrayfield Havens is uh, that uh, uh, circularity and circular economy uh, as a kind of uh, application, direct application of an urban metabolic analysis of the flows uh, uh, going, uh, traversing an urban system is very much uh, based on uh, collaboration as I was uh, explaining. And collaboration is not just uh, among uh, the different actors, but also among uh, different uh, uh, places that are endowed or endowed with different uh, qualities and different possibilities. So what we discover very strongly in the Murrayfield Havens is that because of its position between a big industrial port and the city, this opened up a lot of new possibilities that, for instance, a port like Russell's does not have. So uh, this kind of uh, uh, brought us uh, into uh, the definition of a kind of a port ecosystem in which you need a series of very different uh, building blocks that are gonna interact and build together uh, this uh, circular uh, ambition. And I think this is all. Thank you very much.